How many times have you seen someone get something, but they didn't have the fortitude, the character, the discipline to be able to keep it? I'm not going to lose it. It's not going to slip through my fingers, but I'll be able to hold it securely in my hands. I'll be able to steward it well because now I know I'm assured because of what's inside of me that I'm rock solid. I have a solid foundation. Nothing is going to slip. I'm wealthy because I remember that he is the cause. Everything that he's planted in me as a result of what I've gone through have prepared me for this very moment. It's prepared me to hold it in my hands. It's prepared for me to walk into it. It's prepared me to be able to see it come to pass. I know that it's God. I know it's not out of my own strength, but it's out of his strength. So I'm about to walk into this wealth, but I need to remember. Hey, beautiful. Welcome, welcome to our Manifesto Daily Podcast. This is episode 39, and I am your host, Erin Marie, also known as BWF Woman and at Manifesto Daily over on Instagram. And I'm really excited to welcome you to what we do best, which is keeping Christ in the center, because that's the best way to show up daily, right? I've tried showing up other ways, and I didn't experience success. So I learned over time through prayer and meditation. Meditation, Joshua 1 8 meditation, sitting with God, meditating on His Word. I learned how to keep His Word at the very center of my life because there were a lot of questions that I had about how to actually apply this word. And so that's what we answer here. That's what I aim to do here is to show you how to take the Word of God and make the spiritual practical, right? We want to be able to practically apply this word to our lives so that we can experience success. So we are in season four of our Manifestor Daily podcast. As you know, if you've been following along, we have our Manifestor Daily journal, which is right here. And our Manifestor Daily journal has four sections and we are in the very last section, actually on page 171. And it's I am wealthy. So that's what we're talking about, because I truly believe that God wants us to be abundant. He wants us to be abundantly wealthy, and it's not just for our own benefit. It's because he established a covenant, and he's simply keeping his word. So we're going to get into it and talk about it. Before we go there, I just want to thank all of you who are donating to Manifestor Daily. This is our mission. We do so much in this community to bring the word of God to women around the world through six different YouVersion Bible app plans that I've written also through our number four ranked it was actually ranked number four our I am beautiful wild free affirmations podcast so we keep bringing all of these resources and your donations help us to be able to fund it because we want to do things in excellence and we want it to be accessible to everyone so I just want to thank all the manifesto members all the MHD society members because there's been a huge influx of those recently and for all of those MHD society members we will be having a town hall in our November social big announcements coming so you want to be in the room when you see the invitation come through make sure you put it on your calendar and then the last thing I wanted to say is we do things like prayer challenges so I'm so excited to kick off our very first prayer challenge with a new binder and starter kit which I'll talk about later on this is our new kingdom currency binder. This is how we are making prayer practical. You will literally be praying through 90 days of guided affirmations, scriptures, and prayers for your husband. And even if you're not married for your future husband. And so we'll be doing this together. And I am so excited. So that drops today. All right, right after this podcast, go check out Facebook. I've made a special video just for you. And I think I can actually link it in the description of this video too. So y'all, let's go ahead and get started because I want to talk about I am wealthy. We are in this topic this season and today's actual topic, I know we have our topic in our devotional journal is God wants you to live an abundant life. So God wants you to live an abundant life is what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to get into the how of it. Okay. The how of it. So again, page 171 is where you can take notes. You can also flip to the power word of the week uh, page and also take notes there. Okay. So I want to just go ahead and get started by always, I, I always open by telling a story, right? So 
Back in the day, I owned an assisted living facility. This is like pre-COVID, right? And God had placed on my heart to open this assisted living facility because my grandmother had been mistreated in an assisted living facility. And I wanted to do something to honor her memory. So I opened this assisted living facility and I discovered that I had this gift for elderly people to be friends with them. And there was one particular woman. Her name was Mrs. Ruth. And Mrs. Ruth was my girl. OK, with Ms. Ruth in the room, you were always laughing. You were always talking. And she was an elderly woman, but she just had a spirit about her. So we would make jewelry together. We would color together. I would read the Bible to her because she loved it when people read to her. And over time, she became a friend, not just a resident, but an actual friend. So one day as I stopped through to just check on the residents, uh, in the middle of the day, I went into Ms. Ruth's room. She had gotten a little older, a little bit more frail, but she was laying down in the middle of the day. And this was very different for her. She didn't lay down in the middle of the day. She usually was sitting up. And the nurse had been there earlier that day. So I asked the, res the, the staff, you know, how did the resident check go? What did the nurse say? And then the staff was like, everything is good. And I was like, what about Miss Ruth? Did the nurse say anything about her? Like, what's going on with her? And they said, she's fine. There's nothing going on with her. She's good. So I went back into the room and I just sat there looking at her and I was like, there's something wrong. It's not all good. I don't, I don't really care what the nurse said. Because see, the thing was, I had spent time with Ms. Ruth, right? I had shared moments with her. I had talked to her. I had walked with her. I had played games with her. I had entertained her. And so I knew her. I understood. And so as I was standing there in her room, going back and forth between her room and my staff to talk to them about her, to make sure she had taken her meds for the day and so on and so forth, it just occurred to me that something was not right. So I called my RN administrator, who was my mother, and we agreed that she should go to the hospital. So we sent her to the hospital and the doctor, once she arrived, was so grateful that we had gone ahead and taken that, that next step because it turns out that she had a UTI. And a UTI is very difficult to treat in older people. It can be quite debilitating. It causes a lot of other complications. But it was because I remembered her the way that she typically was, that I was able to potentially circumvent what could have been a much more difficult situation. It was because I remembered how she acted. I remembered how she talked. I remembered how she walked. I remembered that she sat up during the day and she didn't typically lay down. I had these memories that caused me to be able to look at the situation that I was seeing in front of me and understand that something different should have been happening. I understood that there was something different that should have been going on. I had context because of the memories. I had context because I remembered who she was. And if I hadn't have had that context, and if I hadn't have remembered, I wonder if I would have missed a crucial moment. In fact, history now looking back at it tells me I would have missed a crucial moment. It could have been a lot worse than it actually was. So I wonder today, as we kind of get into this concept of the fact that God wants us to live an abundant life, and I believe that God wants us to be wealthy, I wonder how many of us have been taught that wealth was independent of God. So we fail to remember that God is the one who powers it all. I wonder what would happen if we remembered that he is our Jehovah Jireh. I wonder what would happen if we remembered that God is our provider. Somebody say amen in the comments. I wonder what would happen if we remember because we spent time with God that he is bringing us into a good land, a good place. I wonder if we would remember that he is a good, good father. Somebody say yes in the comments. I just wonder. What would happen if we didn't forget the Lord, but instead we remembered him? Because when I remember him, I come into an understanding of who it is that I actually serve. And therefore, my perspective and my view, my vision of the things that are around me completely shifts and changes. Y'all with me? Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we thank you right now for this day and this moment. God, we thank you for this time. Father, we ask that you step into this moment, God, with all power in your hands. 
Father, we ask that you step into this moment to provide us with clarity and knowledge and understanding. God, step into this time. Remove me, God, and let your word reign supreme in this moment, God, and forever. God, let it fall on good grounds. Let it take root in good soil. And God, we will give you the praise and the honor and the glory. God, reveal yourself to us, Father, today. Help us to understand more deeply who you are and what you have for us to know as it pertains to wealth and abundance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So I want you to go ahead and get your Bible out because, you know, we are Bible literate in this community. We believe in going to the word of God because we believe the word of God. So we're going to move around quite a bit in Deuteronomy 8 today. So I would love for you to go ahead and read Deuteronomy 8 in full because it will give you just the best context in the world. And our cornerstone scripture in Deuteronomy 8 is going to be Deuteronomy 8.18. Okay, so Deuteronomy 8.18 says, But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. Remember the Lord your God is what it says. Remember means, and I'm going to give you a definition, it means to bring an awareness to your mind. So it means to become aware of something in your mind. So when I remember something, I become aware of a memory. It's hard to become aware of a memory when the memory hasn't actually occurred. I can't really remember God, as this scripture is saying, if I haven't spent time with God. But let me not get ahead of myself. Let me slow it down because I want to give you some context for what's happening in this chapter and even in the chapters before it, because Moses is talking to the children of Israel. He's talking to them because they are about to go into the promised land. They've been delivered from Egypt and they're going into this land where there's all of these beautiful and wonderful things. And so Moses is giving the children of Israel some commands from God. He's telling them the ropes to skip and the ropes to know. He He's telling them how to to navigate this new land so that when they get there, they understand what to do because when they get there, there's going to be work to do. All right. When they go in, there's going to be work to do. Some of you remember that we've been talking about that over the past couple of weeks. We've been talking about how God says, sit down at this table and eat. And then when we eat, we get up and we're getting up to work. And then when we need to have refreshment, refueling, and we're going to the next level, we're going into the new land, the new purpose, the new place that we sit down and we eat again, but then we get up and work. So this is the cycle. This is part of the divine ecosystem that we have to understand that God has for us. So he's giving them all these instructions. He gives them the 10 commandments in chapter five. In chapter six, he tells them to love the Lord your God and all of the scriptures related to how to do that. In chapter seven, he talks about driving out nations so that they can secure the territory. And in chapter eight, he warns them. He gives them a warning. And that warning is, but do not forget the Lord your God. Do not forget. In fact, don't even not forget. Remember, right? Remember the Lord your God. And I like the fact of of saying remember versus do not forget because it feels more intentional, doesn't it? Say yes. It feels more intentional. If I'm remembering, that means that I am actively bringing an awareness to my mind versus do not forget is something that's passive. It's just like if you happen to remember, then you know, you'll be good to go. I don't want to be warned to not just forget. I want to remember the Lord, your God, right? So he's telling them something very critical. And I think it's very relevant to us today. He's telling them, do not forget the Lord. There's a precursor that I want to read to you in Deuteronomy 8 verse 7. And it says, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron. And you can dig copper out of the hills. So God is describing, or Moses rather, is describing this land that God is bringing the children of Israel into. And it sounds like it's rich. It clearly is abundant. It has all of these good things. I mean, they can literally dig copper out of the hills of this promised land. 
but he gives them a warning in verse 10. He says, when you have eaten and are satisfied, he says, praise the Lord, your God, for the good land he is giving you. And then he says, be careful that you do not forget the Lord, your God, failing to observe his commands, his laws and his decrees that I am giving you this day. So we forget the Lord, our God, when we do what? We fail to remember his commands. We forget the Lord, our God, when we fail to remember exactly who he is, what he said to do, and what he wants for us going forward. We forget when we don't associate remembering with remembering his commands. So in all of this getting, Moses is reminding the children of Israel that there is wealth in this new land and that as a result, It's here for the taking. He says in Deuteronomy 8.18, you have the power to obtain wealth. So he's like, God is giving you this power. You can obtain the wealth. You don't have to, to wait for anything. But when you go in, I need you to remember the caution is there. But remember, somebody say that. Somebody type that in the chat. But remember, that's what Deuteronomy 8.18 starts out with. But remember. I think we're probably going to stay in this verse for a couple of weeks because I can't even get past the hugeness of the statement, but remember, because when I'm remembering, I'm bringing an awareness of the Lord to my mind. When I remember God, I'm remembering memories. I'm recalling these times and spaces in which I've spent time with him. And that's huge because God wants us to remember him. So before I can even get to the fact that it's God who gives us the power to obtain the wealth, I have to stop. I have to pause at this one word, this this one phrase rather, but remember. Because when I do that effectively, I remember the times that he's anchored me. But remember the Lord your God. I remember the times that he's blessed me. But remember the Lord, your God. I remember the times that I wanted to quit and God kept me. I remember the Lord, my God. I remember all of those times where I was sure that I was going to give up because I had seen failure after failure after failure. But yet I remember the Lord, my God, and I was able to move on. I remember the times that he promoted me and I didn't have anything to do with it. And I was amazed at how bountiful his blessings were towards me. I remember the Lord, my God, when I remember God, I can't just step over that. I can't just breeze by that. Because if you think back, if you track back to what God has done for you, if you remember the Lord your God, if you really think back to the times that you just knew that you weren't going to be able to make it, Everything looked dark. It looked like you had reached the end of the road. There was no light at the end of the tunnel. But the things that were in front of you were so huge. They were so overwhelming. They were just totally out of the bounds of your understanding. You didn't know what the solutions were. I'm talking to somebody today who can remember that time. But then God stepped in and he was able to bring you through that place. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. What does it say in Psalms? It says your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I remember the Lord, my God, I am remembering right now that I was running and I was starting to feel weary. I was walking and I was starting to feel like I was faint, but God reminded me, he said, but you are going to mount up on wings like eagles. You will, you are going to run and you're not going to be weary. You're going to walk and you're not going to faint. When you trust in me, he said, you can do everything. All things are possible through the Lord, your God. So I'm just remembering the word. I'm remembering the times. And when I remember this, I have the right perspective. Amen. Do you have the right perspective when you think back to what he's done? Now that you're looking at something that's in front of you, you don't have a skewed perception because you remember it all. You don't think that it was because of you because you remember that it was because of God. You don't get tricked by the enemy into the things that he wants for you to be able to be anchored in so that he can easily pull down the things that God has planted in you. But you want to have deep roots. 
and you want to be able to pull down and tear down according to the word of God, the things that the enemy is trying to confuse us with, right? Trying to mess us up with. He's trying to get in there and steal, kill and destroy. But right now, because I can remember the Lord, my God, I remember that I have the ability, I have the power to obtain wealth. I'm also able to defeat the enemy because I I can pull down, I can tear down, I can walk by faith and not by sight. So the things and the tricks that the enemy tries to use against me that used to work don't work anymore because there's no pride that can overtake me because I remember God. There's no temptation that has the power to overtake me because I remember the Lord, my God. There's no disappointment that's going to forever pull me down because I remember the Lord, my God. There's no depression. There's no sickness. There's no evil. There's nothing that can come against me because I remember him. The danger comes when we don't remember him. The danger comes when we think it was all because of us. The danger comes when we take this position that I am all powerful, that I can do all of these things. And I don't append on to that scripture, onto that statement, the fact that it's only through Christ who strengthens me. I have to remember the Lord, my God, because the moment that I forget the Lord, all of these things that God has blessed me with, they go away. All of this understanding starts to depart because I have allowed sin to come into my relationship. And it is the thing that separates us from God. The Bible says that sin separates us from God. So I don't want to be apart from him. Amen. I want to be close to him. I need God. I want God. I've got to have God in my life. I've grown accustomed to being in this place of a knowing that I have. I become accustomed to the unfolding of his word in my life and watching it literally word by word unfold. I become accustomed to seeing the words that God allows to go forth out of his mouth into my life. I become accustomed to seeing them not return void. I remember these things. I remember that he held me. I remember that he covered me. I remember that he took me up. He snatched me back out of the places when I tried to throw myself over the edge. When I said, God, I don't think that you even remember me right now. See, I'm speaking to somebody whose heart has recently been broken. I'm talking to a woman this morning whose heart is saying, don't believe in God anymore because if God loved you, he wouldn't have allowed this to happen or that to happen. I'm talking to a woman who is in the middle of a painful place this morning and I'm pleading with you to listen very closely. I'm pleading with you to just remember the Lord your God because as you do, he's going to strengthen your soul. As you remember the things that he has done for you, as you remember how he saved you and how he rescued you, as you remember how he pulled you in and he opened that door for you as you remember how he healed you and how he showed up this present moment circumstance is going to be overshadowed by all that God has for you because the closer I get to God the bigger he is the closer I get to God the more clearly I can see the closer I get to him the more I can remember him and remember who he is amen so don't lose hope this morning. Don't give up the fight. I want you to know that God hears you and he sees you and he is not going to forsake you. In fact, he said, I'm going to walk with you through this and I'm going to take you through it and you're going to reach the other side. So I remember God. I remember God. I remember the Lord, my God. If you remember, drop a yes in the chat. If you remember right now, just a moment where God blew your minds where you understood more deeply who he was, I want you to say yes. I am so glad, y'all, that this is the last topic of the year because as I look back through our journal at the other three sections that came before this, we had I am loved and in a beautiful relationship in our first section in quarter one. We had, I am healthy and successful in our second section of the journal in quarter two. We had, I am trusting God, which was our third section in quarter three. And we came into this, I am wealthy. And God is like, I want to tie that all together. I'm stringing it all together because I want you to know that I intend for you to have a full and productive life. 
the loved and beautiful relationship portion is speaking to that relationship that you desire, the one that you want, even if you have one, you want it to be better. Being healthy and successful is part of our divine inheritance. It's what God has given us. There's so many verses that tell us how to be successful, how to be healthy in him, right? And in our physical bodies, in our physical selves, God is telling us, I want you to be healthy and successful. That's a part of this wealth. And then trusting God, we can't get there without trusting him. We can't reach the place of wealth without trusting him because Deuteronomy 818, our verse that we're in today says that he's given us the power to actually obtain the wealth. So God wants us to remember what he's taught us as we've gone through all of these lessons. He wants us to recall and to track back what he said. So when I walk in the room and I see something that's laying down that should be sitting up, like Mrs. Ruth, she was laying down, but she should have been sitting up. I now know what to do because I can track back. I can remember what he's done. When I walk into a conversation and I see something acting up that should be acting right, I now know what to do. See, in the past, I would have run away. I would have forgotten about it. I wouldn't have wanted the confrontation, right? I wouldn't have known even how to head into an addressing of that that situation. The conversation would have literally stripped me of my voice. I wouldn't have known what to say, but now I know what to do and I can remember what God has taken me through and the promises that he said. When I walk into a relationship and I start to see something failing that I know should be succeeding, I remember the Lord, my God. I remember what he said, and I now know what to do. See, God has taken you through everything that you've been through in the past, not just to take you through something, but he was trying to show you what it is that he wants for you to do. He was giving you seasoning. That's what I refer to these past difficult conversations and challenges and situations as. It's been seasoning because through it all, I learned something. Through it all, you learned something. You walked away with something and nothing that you've been through is going to be wasted. Absolutely nothing that you've been through is going to be wasted, but God is going to use it all. It seems like it's all unrelated. These three topics that we went through so far in this journal seemingly were unrelated, but God said, I'm tying it all together. I'm threading it together because together you have a full picture. When you wrap all of these things up that you've been through in your life, you think back to these situations, these circumstances that have been challenging and difficult, when you see what God has done and you remember the Lord your God, you then have a reassurance. You know that God is going to do what he said that he was going to do. I can follow my father because I know that I can lift it up to him. It's above me, right? It's all above me now. It's above me now. In Romans 4 and 17, if we can go there really quickly, I want to remind us of what God says that we have the access to do. I'm just following my father. I'm not doing anything different. I am doing exactly what he did. I'm following in his footsteps because Jesus said, follow me. That's what he said, right? He told the disciples, follow me. And so I want to follow him. I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow my father and and I want to emulate the actions that Jesus took. I want to emulate the actions that the father took. So Romans 4 and 17 is where we are right now. And it says, as it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. It says in this version that God literally calls into being things that were not. In another version, it says he calls those things which do not exist as though they did. And in another version, y'all know I love my versions. It says he calls those things that are not as though they were. A final version says that he creates new things out of nothing. This is what my father does. My father calls things that are not as though they were. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You're looking at your past and you're looking at it saying, this is something that I am not proud of. This is something that I don't know why I had to go through it. I don't even know how to process it. And God is saying nothing is wasted. Nothing is wasted. 
you now are in a better position because you understand how to take it to him. You can remember the things that he's done for you to be before and you're able to say, even if I don't see it in front of me, I can call those things that are not as though they are. I can create new things out of nothing. I can turn it over to God and watch him do this for me. And God will be faithful to do what it is that he said that he would do. So we are more than conquerors. Paul even said it in Romans 8 and 31. He says, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? We have to remember before I step into the wealth, it says, but remember in Deuteronomy 818, but remember. So we're getting prepped. Somebody is sitting right here now saying, I thought this was a I am wealthy teaching. Like, I thought this was how I was going to learn how to be wealthy. And what I'm trying to tell you is that the first step to walking into wealth is remembering. It's remembering who he is, is remembering what he's done. And all of a sudden, that thread becomes very clear. Because now I know that the true wealth that I think that I'm walking into, this, this wealth that even is described in Deuteronomy 8, of all of these lands and all of this milk and honey, all of these riches, all of this abundance, I now know that the true wealth is actually inside of me. The wealth of knowing and being rock solid, rooted and grounded in the word of God, of knowing who I am in Christ, of being assured of who I am in Christ, that right there is the true wealth because when I get the external wealth in my hands, How many of you know that that internal wealth is what's going to cause me to keep it? How many times have you seen someone get something, but they didn't have the fortitude, the character, the discipline to be able to keep it? I'm not going to lose it. It's not going to slip through my fingers, but I'll be able to hold it securely in my hands. I'll be able to steward it well, because now I know I'm assured because of what's inside of me that I'm rock solid. I have a solid foundation. Nothing is going to slip. I'm wealthy because I remember that he is the cause. Everything that he's planted in me as a result of what I've gone through have prepared me for this very moment. It's prepared me to hold it in my hands. It's prepared for me to me to walk into it. It's prepared me to be able to see it come to pass. I know that it's God. I know it's not out of my own strength, but it's out of his strength. So I'm about to walk into this wealth, but I need to remember when I do get it, I now know Deuteronomy 8 and 1. I now know that there's a couple of things that I'm going to have as a result of getting it, as a result of walking into this wealth. If I can just track back to Deuteronomy 8 and 1, Deuteronomy 8 and 1 says, Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today so that you may live and increase and may enter and possess the land that the Lord promised. Right after that, it reminds me to remember. So see, this entire chapter, y'all, is trying to tell us something. This entire chapter is trying to introduce something to us. It's reminding us that we have to remember. It's reminding me that I'm going to get something when I actually do obey the commands of the Lord by remembering them. So what do I get? Let's go ahead and write these down. There's four things that that scripture said that we will receive once we follow God's commands and once we remember the Lord our God. I get to live. I get to increase. I get to enter and I get to possess. Somebody say it with me. I get to live. I get to increase. I get to enter and I get to possess the land. So I'm not going to lose it because I have secured it by being obedient. I'm not going to lose it because I've chosen to remember the Lord, my God. Are you with me? Somebody say yes. So I want us to be ready. I don't want us to get the blessing and then lose it. I want us to be ready, y'all. So right here, I get to live. I get to live. What does that mean? It means that the things that took others out in my family, they stop right here with me. I'm breaking every generational curse. I don't care how many times I have to crucify my flesh. I don't care how much I need to place my flesh on the cross. I don't care what I have to say no to in my flesh that causes my spirit to become stronger because I'm not walking according to the flesh. I'm walking according to the spirit. So I get to live. Psalms 118.17 says, I will not die, but live. And I will proclaim what the Lord has done. I also get to increase. 
What does that mean? That means my more is coming. Somebody say my more is coming. I get to increase. We talked about stretching our tents. We talked about widening our stakes. Stakes, I get to increase as a result of obeying God and remembering him. Luke 6, 38 says, give and it will be given to you a good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over, it will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So I get to increase. Somebody say increase. I also, number three, get to enter. What does that mean? It means I'm going in. Somebody say I'm going in. I'm going in. This is the next level. I'm going into the next level. And I know that some people are like, but it's scary. And I honestly don't know what to tell you except for the fact that if God has called you to it and it's not scaring you, I I really have to question it because God calls us into higher places that we've never been before. And he asks us intentionally to walk by faith and not by sight for somebody who is on this, this, this live today, you are looking at your life and you're thinking, you know, I'm not really sure. I'm a little afraid. I don't, I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do because God is calling me to do something and I, I, I'm a little scared about it. And I want to tell you that that's normal. You're not abnormal, but you are normal. This is what happens when God calls you to a higher level. It's going to challenge you. It's going to cause you to increase your faith. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to enter in. Somebody say, I'm going in. Psalms 95, 2 even tells us how to enter in. It says, It enter into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout triumphantly to him in song. So now I know I'm entering in in a certain way. I'm going in and I'm going to be happy. I'm not going to be stressed. I'm going to go in with thanksgiving. I'm not going to be burnt out. I'm going in not looking like what I've been through because I've been through a couple of things. But God says that I'm going to enter into his presence with thanksgiving. I'm going to enter into his presence with joy with a song that's triumphant in my spirit. And then lastly, I'm going to possess. Somebody say possess. I'm going to possess possess it. And it's not going to be out of my strength. It's not going to be out of my doing. It's going to be out of God's strength. It's going to be out of his doing. I'm going to come into it Just like God took Abraham into it. I'm going to see all of these things. And God told Abraham and he's telling me and you right now, as far as you can see, I'll give it to you. He said that in Genesis 13, 15, he said, for all the land that you see, I will give to you and to your offspring forever. So he's giving it to you. I'm I'm possessing the land. Somebody say possess. And this is all because I'm remembering God. I'm being careful to follow his commands. I've placed him and what he's done at the forefront of my mind. Somebody today, as I mentioned before, is afraid. And I want to tell you, not only is it normal, but I'm I'm telling you today that God wants you to remember. He just wants you to remember him. And as you remember him, those fears of what he's called you into are going to start to fade. All right. You might go in shaking, but the closer you get to God, the bigger he is to you, the closer that you get to God, the more clearly you can see him. And so as a result, I'm walking in and I'm going to live. I'm going to increase. I'm going to enter and I'm going to possess. Somebody say it with me. I'm going to live. I'm going to increase. I'm going to enter and I'm going to possess. So I'm living. I'm increasing. I'm entering and I'm possessing. Amen. 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 God is doing a new thing for us and we have to be present for it. I'm here for it. Are you here for it? I am here for it. I'm excited about it because it's not coming to me by my strength. It's coming to me by his strength. So I'm going to keep on doing the hard thing. I'm going to keep on doing the challenging thing and I'm going to do it increasingly by faith. I'm going to do it increasingly by not my spirit, my, my physical eyesight, but I'm going to keep on looking at it with my spiritual eyesight and I'm going to walk into that thing successfully. And so are you. So are you. Amen. Amen. We're going to walk into this thing. All right. So now we're going to transition into our God says segment. So this is what God has to say to us that I took note of in my journal And it's a word of encouragement to someone today. All right. To that woman who is wondering how she's going to do the thing that God has called you to. It says, do not be dismayed 
By who has fallen away, greater is coming, God says. Be reserved and store your value, pouring out specifically where I have shown you. You can't miss what I have for you, God says. I see you and fill you with satisfaction like only I can. I have what I have for you as I have told you many times, and it comes to you swiftly and in order. I give unto you and prosper you as I have already predestined. I am sovereign. I see after you and heal your heart and spirit. I will bring to you what I said. So be kind to all. Rely with your whole self on me, God says. And as you seek me during this time of fasting, of prayer, I will reveal, I will fulfill, I hear you and I know you. I will fulfill the desires of your heart. Nothing can separate you from my love or from my promises to you. I do as I wish and I will do as I have stated, God says. Fullness is in me. Come to me. Rest lays in your spirit and I fill you with joy. You have a joy of knowing and a spirit of expectancy. You know that all of this is not happening by chance. God says it's simply because I am sovereign that I have put together the unique combination of your life over the course of time. I have placed a treasure in your heart. It's my love. Pour it out. Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father God. Thank you, God, for the clarion call that you've given us to pour out of our spirits all that you have placed in us. God, let us continue to have sensitive hearts toward who it is that you've called us to be. And God, let us remember you and not forget you, God. Let us remember what you've done, who you've been, God, what you've said. God, let it reverberate in our minds and in our hearts when we're faced with temptation. God, when we're faced with challenges, When we're faced with negative thinking, God, let us remember, and God, let it just flip the script on all of that that the enemy wishes for us, God. I ask that you raise up a standard against him, Father. I thank you, God, that we are more than conquerors according to your word. God, I thank you that the words that you have said are going forth and they cannot return void in our lives. Father, help us to walk by faith and not by sight. God, let us see God in the spiritual and depart from relying only on our physical sight. God, give us a perception of you when you're in every situation. Help us to know when to stand back, God, when to bow down and pray, God, when to stand up and speak, God. Let every action be dictated by the word of God. Lord, let the words that you are speaking to us, let the meditations that you have given to us in our hearts, God, let them be acceptable in your sight. God, thank you for being our strength. Thank you for being our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, God. So y'all, a few announcements for today. Our God Get My Husband prayer challenge that starts on 1029 is open for registration today. And y'all, this is a completely new concept. I've created a video. I'm going to link it in the description. And I've also placed it in our Manifestor Daily Facebook group. But this concept allows us to pray for our husbands in four key areas of his life, his spirit, his health, his career, and his wealth. And I've even created journal pages here with all of our activities that we're going to be undergoing over the course of the next 90 days starting on October 29th. This is a very new concept. It's called prayer stuffing. So for those of you who are familiar with cash stuffing, how you literally can save through savings challenges, this is a prayer challenge. And I've created currency with different activities on them from scriptures to prayers. And also I have another one here that I want to show you through affirmations. So we will be praying over our husbands, literally securing his life in the word of God. And I'm so excited about the miracles and manifestations of God that we're going to see in the lives of our husbands. And we're also praying for future husbands. So for those of you who know that you are destined to be a wife, this is where you need to be. So this is going live today. All right. So you can go ahead and grab your kingdom currency 
starter kit that includes your currency, your journal, all your envelopes, and your pen. So there's so much in this beautiful box that I am unboxing for you so that you can see it. And I only have a limited quantity, so please make sure that you grab yours. Um, there's not a lot of them, all right? So we will be praying together starting on October 29th, and we'll be using our kingdom currency to prayer stuff in our envelopes. A few other announcements. We have Journal and Affirm coming back this month. We will be offering four days of Journal and Affirm on the 16th, 18th, 19th, and 20th. It will be live in our Facebook group, Manifestor Daily. So if you are not a part of the Facebook group, go ahead and join. But as you know, we have a fabulous team of moderators, some women who are married, some who aren't. We're going to be talking about marriage in preparation for our Kingdom Currency Prayer Challenge, God Get My Husband. I also wanted to remind you that our Renew Retreat and Conference is 70% full, y'all. The application process will reopen on October the 15th. For anyone interested in applying to attend, it is going to be an amazing, amazing time in God. And it's also going to be a luxe experience because if you know me, you know I don't do nothing halfway. Okay, so we do these things on a certain level because you deserve. And that really is our entire concept. It actually is the theme of this year's Renew Retreat. Actually, next year's Renew Retreat and Conference is You Deserve Beauty. You deserve beauty. So we will be developing and unfolding beauty for you at every turn. And we'll be hosting at the beautiful Serum Bee in Atlanta, Georgia. It's going to be so much fun. I've been there twice in the last two weeks, y'all, just looking around and seeing things. And God is causing some things to happen that you will want to be in the house to witness. So thank you, as always, for joining me as we manifest our purpose on purpose by keeping Christ in the center, because that truly is the best way to show up daily. I love you guys. Mwah.